Hello, I am Luc Bourlier, developer at TypeSafe and committer on the Scala ID project. This is the last part of the new and noteworthy in Scala ID 3.0 video series. The first part is about the improvement to the existing features. The second part describes the new features and this part covers the Scala debugger. So why a Scala debugger inside Scala ID? The fact is, Scala code is compiled for the Java Virtual Machine and the Java debugger in Eclipse can be used on any application built for the JVM. So it is possible to use it to debug Scala applications. But the experience is not great, as the Java debugger does not handle well key parts of the Scala language. On the other side, the Scala debugger is tailored to debug Scala applications. The focus was put on displaying information in a way which makes sense for Scala and on providing a better stepping support. The presentation covers the different parts of a debugging session, plus a, a short section about remote debugging. Let's start from the beginning. How to launch a Scala application inside the Scala debugger. I have here a basic implementation of Hello World in Scala. So let's first put a breakpoint on the print end line. There are multiple ways to start a debugger in Eclipse. It can be done from the top level menu, from the toolbar, or directly from inside the editor. Let's select the debuggers and Scala application. A dialog appears. It is asking us to select a launcher. There are two launchers available, the Java debugger and the Scala debugger. It is in our case we want to use the Scala debugger. The application starts and the debugger correctly stops where we ask it to. We can resume it, it prints Hello World and terminates. Let's now look at a more interesting example. I have a class called List Enclosure which contains list enclosures. So let's first put a breakpoint on the print a line again and launch the debugger. The launcher selection dialog appears again, but this time let's put a default for the whole workspace. My default will be the Sky Debugger, but it is possible to select a different launcher for each launch configuration. The application starts and stops at the breakpoint. If we look at the debug view, we can see the first difference with the Java Debugger. The Scala Debugger understands how the Scala compiler icon names and displays them like they are in code. Let's step forward. Now the list has been initialized, let's check it in the variable view. What we see is the internal structure of a list in Scala. A list in Scala is a chained list, so what we have is a node with the first element and then the tail of the list, and if we, if we look inside the tail, we, we find the second element and then the tail of this part, and so on. And while this is the actual structure of a list, it is usually not practical when debugging an application. By using the logical structure option, the entire structure is replaced by a flat list of the content. This option is working for most of the type of the Scala collection, like list or vector in our case. Let's look now at stepping over in our code. The application is correctly stopped just before a call to map. If we are using the Java debugger, a call to step over will jump directly to the print line line. The reason being that map is an actual method call and the Java debugger just jump over method call on step over. The Sky debugger is aware of the closures and is able to step through them the way one would expect. When the step over action is used, the application stops inside the closure. The value of the current element being processed is visible in the variable view. Using step over, we can step through each loop of the map. The variable view correctly displays the element being processed. The step out action correctly supports closures, and in the position we are, it allows us to exit the map call. The next call to step over performs the assignment and stops on the print end line. The step into action is also tricked to work well with Scala application. It correctly manages synthetic method and other methods generated by the compiler. The last feature I want to show is the remote Scala debugger. I have a launch configuration for the list and closure application configured to run like a remote VM. With these parameters, the VM starts and waits for a debugger to connect. A remote Scala debug session is created using a remote Java application configuration and one of the two Scala connectors. When the connection is established, the application can be debugged like any other Scala application. This was a quick overview of the Scala debugger. If you want more information, you can check the documentation. If you have any feedback, please use the mailing list or the ticketing system.